grand old guys of Russian studies had already claimed in 94. He said, we quite clearly require a much greater understanding of the fluidity and complexity of the ways in which culture is both constructed and consumed in everyday life. Due to globalization, I think this fluidity and complexity has all but increased exponentially. Partly due to this globalization, non-Western environments strongly question the liberal underpinnings of many of cultural studies' tenets. Uh, and while cultural studies are usually more than willing to take in these other cultures as theoretical other, once becoming a lived and experienced other uh, is, uh, is, is something different. That situation gets even more complicated when cultural studies teachers abroad then find themselves in the danger of becoming exactly as judgmental as the theory they are trying to teach uh, forbids them. Yeah. Cultural studies teachers abroad then find themselves in the danger of becoming exactly as judgmental as the theory they are trying to teach forbids them to do. In relation to the difficulties of global feminism, um, where in uh, 2006, paraphrasing Chandra Talpeni Mohanty formulates it in the following way, and I quote, how we think of the local in and off the global and vice versa without falling into colonizing or cultural relativist latitudes about difference is crucial in this intellectual and political landscape. And in her case, this is without even leaving the US. I'm just talking about teaching in the US. How much more difficult this is when actually doing this anywhere else in the world. But I do want to end, uh, um, after all my teaching, telling you about all my teaching failures, with a, with, a, with a positive note of what I think cultural studies might accomplish. Um, and this is a short text written as a rebuttal to the contribution found on uh, the excellent web page Hakania ACAT, which publishes and discusses recent texts on the culture of Central and Southeastern Europe. So this is, a, this is a, the guys who are doing this, they're based in, in Austria, and they're talking mostly about Hungary, about the Czech Republic, Slovenia, Slovakia, and the area around there. Uh, without touching uh, upon the issue at hand that was being discussed, I'll quote what uh, one of the respondents said on the webpage, this guy's name is Marcus Reisenlander, um, and he was discussing on this, web, uh, on this website that talks about uh, um, you know, how, uh, how central European cultural studies should be, he talks about post-colonialism and his teaching in Hong Kong. Uh, this in itself, I think, is very, very good. And he says, Part of my daily pedagogical task is to explain to my mostly Hong Kong Chinese students that the concept of Orientalism, the key concept of post-colonial theory, is not easily and seamlessly applicable to the Hong Kong context. The point is that these situations, post-colonial discussions, are highly specific. Hong Kong's situation arises out of a history of double colonization and the unique position of a quasi-independent, technologically and infrastructurally highly developed city-state that has to face its colonial past as well as a rapidly changing China at the same time as maintaining its global city status against increasingly fierce competition. And quote. Mind you, this perspective view in Hong Kong is incorporated in a discussion of post-colonialism in regard to Central Europe. I would argue that this is exactly what teaching cultural studies internationally is supposed to do. To sensitize teachers and students to the local issues abroad and allow them to view home conflicts with newly sharpened intellectual terms. While I'm very much in favor of reflecting what the teaching of cultural studies internationally does, uh, not only to the location of its teaching, but also to its contents. I'm not arguing for a possible international cultural studies to, for example, follow the lead of English language teaching where attempts are underway to internationalize it and make it a mutual communication tool. There's a very good article, and again, I forgot whether it was the Star or the Inquirer or two weeks ago on Sunday, on teaching English in the Philippines. Uh, which was very, very interesting in that it said, uh, you know, according to grammar, many of the things here are wrong because uh, they are tra many of the phrases are directly in translation from Kagawa. Um, but this is, it for me, and this is also what the article said, I think this is exactly the interesting point, and the localization point. Um, uh, and, uh, and this is the 
I believe this is a positive effect. It depends how you use it in the classroom, of course, and for what you are using it, but to me this is a positive nature. Uh, if not for the fact of pointing these things out and saying, okay, this is where we come from, this is what we do in the language. Right. Um, so I'm not saying that we should have the internationalized cultural studies uh, thing, um, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, but it is important to, to say that the cultural studies is not a mutual communication tool, the same way that English actually is. Leaving cultural and dialectical issues aside, there does exist the danger that this undertaking is performed solely for the business community. And uh, this was the Dilbert one, uh, where you know, we are just instrumentalizing cultural studies and say, how can we use this? How can we sell it? Uh, much cultural and local specificity might be lost, uh, but there might also be, gain there might also be gains. Uh, for one, it might empower local reflection within the global. For another, cultural studies will be better able to theorize and employ the dialectics of closeness and distance. Um, that was one of the things that I really liked that was brought out in, in your session uh, about the distance of Mindanao, uh, the, the way it is being discussed in the in Manila newspapers. And that distance is an important factor. Uh, and I think John had a very good point in this one. Okay, so issues of closeness and distance. And lastly, it might be worthwhile taking up an impulse from feminism in this regard once again. Ron Ware cautions us against what she calls the folly of global sisterhood as a valiant ideal. End of quote. But she nevertheless entertains the thought that, and I quote again, the dream of a feminist public sphere that is open to women from all over the world is more appropriate than ever. End of quote. And my last sentence is, might not also cultural studies claim a bit of this dream as their own? Thing that, that Dilbert is, is, is showing, yeah, this is this is reality. They have, and I mean, 